no? Feed up a little bit more. Right to the plastic there. Okay, you're good to go anytime. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't think too much. Arms out. And jump. <sighs> Maybe you should push. We can do that, right? We just take arms up, we'll count slow. Okay, three, two, one! Oh! So this is the owner of Xfungi um, and this is like the little command center where you watch all the jumps on your computer. You practically watch every single jump, eh? Yeah, I mean it's an important thing to make sure that everything is being done properly every single time. And that's not just keeping an eye on the staff, but it's also making sure that the customers are having fun as well. Mm -hmm. So you, when the car, the cage goes up, you just watch it on the computer there and you can see that the guy in the cage is setting everything up right and making sure the guy yeah, leaves yeah, the mean, cage the, the, properly. The, <laughs> yeah, the, the nice thing we have about the system here mm -hmm. is because we've got cameras right up at the top, um, you're able to provide an extra set of eyes on everything that's happening up at the top. And we, bungee jumping, you can't have too many checks and balances. So what about the ropes? Um, you have this interesting system where you, you weigh the people first, you make sure that the corresponding rope is, belongs to that person's weight, and then uh, that's how you know. Yeah, so we use three different cords here, mm -hmm. green, a red, and a black. And according to your weight, that will determine which rope you're on. So, what we have to do for every bungee jump, we want to make sure that everybody uh, jumps to a consistent height above the ground. Okay, um, and our aim here is that every person, regardless of their weight, will be two meters above the water. The way we do that is twofold. By making sure that the customer is using the correct rope according to their weight, and then secondly, we then calibrate the uh, length of the bungee cord and strap to compensate for their extra or less weight. Hmm. And you make these ropes? Yeah, we do. Um, it, it's actually a very port, important part of our business is rope making. We actually make bungee jump ropes for not just bungee jumps, but for different rides, whether they be for kids bungee, uh, bungee trampolines or whether they're for the rocket ball ejection seat type rides and also for bungee jumps all around the world. And that human slingshot thing you got going too. Yeah, human slingshot is uh, an interesting one here. Um, the Brits kind of like to call it the human uh, catapult. Americans like to call it slingshot. Really, it's an adult version of Angry Birds. Whoa! You know, like a horizontal bungee jump. Right, and right. so you get launched horizontally and you fly about 90 meters in total. Strong, strong rope. <laughs> okay, so this is a green bungee cord. Uh -huh. The green bungee cord we use for customers that are between 40 and 60 kilos in weight. You'll notice a few different things with this. First of all, we color everything in green. It comes from the green tub. And when you get weighed, if you're between 40 and 60 kilos, your weight will be written with a green pen on your hand. Mm. There are lots of things that provide uh, visual reminders for all of us as to exactly which rope you should be on. 
We got the right chord? Red one G, seven three plus six twenty-seven. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> the jack, the double jack. Uh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> Down we go. going yeah? yeah yeah okay all right see you later <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cup and cup. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, How was that, man? That was awesome. Second it? time, even better. Yeah, it is. It's like conscious the second time. You know. You know <laughs> Just can watch back. what's going on here. Yeah. Got my certificate of courage. Bungee jumping. <laughs> interesting thing is the way that they're constructed so the rubber that we use is uh, extruded latex um, we have our own recipe of um, extruded rubber latex that we use uh, because we buy it in quite big quantities we're able to specify exactly how it's made so from our point of view that is the dimension of each of the individual strands but not only that, the coating that we use as well. You'll see a lot of bungee jumps and traditionally um, using white cord. The white cord is infused with talcum powder when the manufacture. The recipe that we use, um, which is really the latest generation of ropes, you'll see is a black color. And uh, the reason for the black rubber is because it's infused with silicon. Mm. The silicon serves two purposes. Silicon reduces the friction, so the lifespan of the rope lasts longer, but it also makes for a, a much smoother jump, which is much more gentle on the body and much nicer for the customer. When we come down this end, we have a, a bobbin cover here, um, and then attached to the bobbin cover is the really important bit of the hardware, so the carabiner here. One of the things that's important with the carabiner is we only use screw lock carabiners so when this screw is locked there's no way that the gate can possibly be opened part of the rigging is where we use the rubber to tie down here and this prevents any slippage at all with the carabiner the weakest part of a carabiner is laterally and if you weren't using screw lock carabiners and if you weren't locking down properly there's a very small risk that you could unlock the carabiner accidentally. So there are two additional safety aspects that you should really look for with every bungee jump company that you jump with. Mm. And you replace the ropes um, after how many jumps? So as an approximation, a bungee jump cord is spent after about 350 to 400 um, uses. Mm. 
The reason I say about is because that's not how we determine the um, time to replace a bungee cord. We replace a bungee cord when 5% of these strands are broken. Mm. Okay, so you can see this one here, we can see here there's a strand here that's broken. Typically a uh, green rope is made up of nearly a thousand strands. Mm -hmm. So when 5% of those are broken, that's when we would um, re replace the cord. So part of the daily checks is where we're checking the cord, recording how many breaks there are, so that we know how much life we've got left in the cord before it needs to come out of service. And the cage itself, you do a lot of maintenance on this tower and this cage. Yeah, every, every month, we're required by the Thai authorities to have a civil engineer mm. come down, do an inspection of the structure and all of the mechanical sides of the bungee mm. jump and sign off to say it is fit for purpose and it is mechanically and structurally safe. In between the month um, or in between inspections, the very first thing we do with our daily checks is checking the top and bottom limit switches, for example. Weekly checks will go up and we'll check to make sure that the uh, bearings on all of the rollers are all full of grease. We'll check the sling itself to make sure that there are no nicks or cuts in it. So there's a lot of things that customers won't see because they're behind the scenes but are extremely important. And that's where not all bungee jumps are equal. Mm -hmm. And when you're coming down to when you've decided that you want to do a bungee jump, there's some certain things that you need to look for. The first thing would be to, when you arrive on site, would be to look around. Do the grounds look well kept and look well maintained? Because the chances are, if the grounds aren't well maintained, then the structure and, um, is probably not going to be well maintained either. Ask the bungee jump operator, do they have insurance? If they don't, well then you've really got to ask yourself the question, well, why haven't they got insurance? You know, if they're skimping on costs there for insurance, what else are they skimping on? Ask them what standards they follow. See how long the bungee jump has been open for. Do your research on the internet, look at the reviews. See if people have had a good time down there see what other people's opinions are as to whether a place is good or not good. In exactly the same way as if you were buying a car, you check lots of dealers and you check lots of cars before you, you buy them. Well, it, it's the same with any extreme sport. Just because you're on holiday and on vacation doesn't mean that you shouldn't stay safe. And our single aim here is to keep every single one of our customers safe. Our mm. secondary aim is to make sure that every customer has a fantastic time. And you've had how many jumps now? So this year coming into 2019 will be our 30th year of uh, operation here in Pattaya and during that time we've um, now surpassed 100,000 jumpers. So that's a huge number um, but the bit that's really important is it's been without any accidents and without any problems. We have um, two jump masters here that have been jumping here for over 20 years and our third, ma third jump master, he's been here for nearly 10 years. And uh, jump master Jeff, he's had over a thousand jumps now. Jeff, Jeff has had over a thousand jumps himself, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> My brain is starting to believe this actually really oh, works. <laughs> I remember the first month I opened, I did 50, I think. Really? Oh, yeah, we were testing cords. And, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it. All day long. It, it's so funny because the second jump is like almost just as scary as the first oh, one. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> Yeah, I still get up there. Immigration made me do one last year. They made you do it? Oh, I worked here. Who <laughs> you worked here? <laughs> right. Is it scary? Huh? How is it? So, um, you don't want to think about it. <laughs> you just, 
Uh, it's okay. It's, like, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. It's two seconds. It's just it's just whoosh and you're done. And it doesn't hurt. It's okay. Really? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. You're gonna be so glad you did it. Yeah, you're gonna be so happy after you did it. Yeah. <laughs> wow, she very good. Uh. We cannot. Go. It's always good to see the ladies when they jump. <laughs> Yeah. Makes the men brave. Okay, go, go, go. There she is. Oh. Another girl. <laughs> Good job! <laughs> Probably gonna need a push. No, you gotta push. <laughs> Let it go! You're good, Bo! You're good! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I was gonna jump if you didn't push him. <laughs> you rocked it, you and your friend. Kicked ass. That was good. Kicking ass, buddy. Got a night jumper. Oh, okay. I saw your name there for me. This girl. Okay, perfect. Okay, girl, you want to take me home? <laughs> so weird. Or, just like I said, 54. Where are you from? China. China? China? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, girl, go. Walk, walk. Yeah. This girl is not with her friends or anything. No. She just shows up alone to just jump in the dark. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. What oh, a ballsy chick. Almost never happens. It's maybe one or two a month after 6 30. Wow. That's amazing. It's the same as skydiving? No, different. No, it's very different. <laughs> Oh, how'd it go? Oh, <laughs> hey, good. Brave, man. She went straight That's up. incredibly brave. Yeah, no problem. I'm on holiday. <laughs> Has she done this before? That's what I want to know. I know she might have to do that. Because, like, who the fuck just shows up and does that? <laughs> Great girl. 
Fantastic.